Hello, uh, my name is Brady Wolf. I am a beef farmer from right here in Minnesota uh, on the western side of the state and we're here to talk about beef today. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of cooking and I'll let Chef John uh, introduce what we're gonna do and tell you who he is. Good morning, my name is John Manhouse. I'm the corporate executive chef for Grand Casinos and we are going to be talking about beef today and um, you know how to how to treat it right and to, to make food like you could get at my operations. So what'd you bring for us today, Brady? Uh, today I bought, brought some bone-in ribeyes. I'm um, really excited about these. We're just, as our um, ranch is growing, we're just starting our, our new side of our business, which is actually a little bit of meat sales. And so this was from the very first animal uh, that we did through the through this side of the company and we're really excited to start it and you're gonna be the first one to cook some of the beef from it. So. Well fantastic. I'm gonna get the uh, stove going here. We gotta get a really nice hot pan so we have plenty of time to discuss what we're doing. Nice part about your bone-in ribeyes here is that anytime you have a steak with a bone in it there's inherently more flavor because the bones actually are the foundation of flavor. In the kitchen we actually make stock out of them, which is what we make our good soups out of and all that kind of stuff. It's the basis for good sauces and stocks. So what we're going to do is we're getting a pan really nice and hot. You always want to start with a hot pan before you add your oil to the pan. We're going to need a little bit of oil to make sure that the steak doesn't stick. Um, but what's happening here is the molecules in the pan are starting to get excited and if you put your oil in too early they actually just sit on top of the metal. If you heat the pan the oil will have a chance to actually get into the metal almost seasoning it which will help you keep the steak from sticking right on. It is going to develop some flavor some color we call that fond in the pan or souks. Souks is the basis for the word succulent if you didn't know. Um, we're going to season the steaks, we're going to sear them in the pan, and they're relatively thin. These are only about an inch thick, so we're actually going to cook them almost the entire way in the pan. But then the key to finishing these steaks off good is to make sure that we allow them to rest before we cut into them. So steaks or proteins do two things when they cook. They shrink and they exude moisture. So as the steak will start to tighten up because of the heat, it'll start to exude that moisture. And if we cut into it when it's really hot, it's just going to push all that moisture right out of the steak. If we give it time to rest, 15 minutes on the counter in the open air, it'll have a chance to reabsorb those intercellular juices and be really juicy when you cut into it. You, high temperature is what you're looking to do for middle meats. So when I say middle meats, the ribeye is in between the, the shoulder and the, and the round, right? Yep. As far as where it's located on the animal. That muscle isn't necessarily used for locomotion. Whenever the animal uses the muscle for locomotion, more collagen develops. The more the collagen that's present, the longer and slower you have to cook the protein in order to break down that collagen. But middle meats, ribeyes, New York strips, filet mignon, even sirloin, um, you really don't need that slow cooking process because there's a lack of collagen. Right, so like I got a brisket here, <coughs> and so like a brisket like this would be a high locomotive meat because it comes from between the front legs, right? Correct. And so then this is something you'd want to cook low and slow. slow and slow, yeah. So like 200 degrees, 250 degrees for up to even 18 hours, depending. I like to cook all of my proteins when they're locomotion meats like you're talking about, like brisket um, or shank, uh, or even some of the chuck mussels. I like to take those and I'll smoke them or slow cook them for about 12 hours at about 225, 250 degrees. Um, but then the internal temperature is what I actually look for too. I like to get that internal temperature on a muscle that has a lot of collagen to it. I like to get that internal temperature up to about 190 degrees Fahrenheit. That's when the collagen will actually break down. But the problem with going fast is that it'll just dry out. And if you notice, I'm seasoning with just salt and pepper here. I like these little seasoning mills that I brought from home, actually. They're kind of my faves. So you talked a little bit about the proteins in the meat. Um, I think that's a great uh, topic on, on what, what we can get from beef and why, why beef is an important part of the diet. I know that as a guy that raises it, um, I definitely have it as a favorite staple in my diet. And but. It's more than just taste, there's a lot of other things that are going on in there too, uh, such as 
your protein, which is your big one, but then your your iron and your your zinc and other uh, B vitamins as well. Uh huh. Yeah, beef is an excellent source of nutrition. Um, matter of fact, it's one of the, the best sources of steam iron you can find. Um, you know, when people ask about um, healthy options, you know, healthy is about being well balanced in all aspects. It's not just about eating one thing all the time. If you do that, you could be deficient in some of your nutrients. Um, you know, by the ounce, beef is one of the best sources of protein and nutrients you can find. It just is flat out. And I love the way it tastes. So. And by the calories too. I mean, if you're if you're looking at calorie numbers, the amount of calories per gram of, of protein is, is pretty low as well uh -huh, compared uh -huh. to some of the other options. Well, and the amount of other sources of protein you would have to eat to equal one serving of beef is astronomical in some cases. I think it's like, what, four or five times the amount of peanut butter you'd have to eat in order to meet the same, you know, amount in, of, uh, of protein available in beef. Right, it's just pretty crazy. So, we're getting a good sear on this now. I like to push down to make sure, especially when there's a bone in it, you want to have good contact with the pan. If the steak isn't contacting the pan, it's not searing it, okay? And the pan's starting to get warm, so you want to use a towel like I'm doing. If you don't burn yourself. You'll learn pretty quick if you You'll don't. learn pretty quick. <laughs> so I like to go about three to five minutes aside, depending on how hot that pan is and how much protein we put in there. We put a good amount of protein in here and pretty much filled the pan. You don't want to overcrowd it. I wouldn't want to put another steak in here at all. That's just too much protein for the surface area of the pan. Because you got to remember, you introduced a cold product into the pan, so the temperature of this pan is already dropping down. At this point in time, we're just waiting for it to get a good sear on that first side. And then we're going to flip it over, sear the other side, and by that time, these steaks should pretty much be ready to come off the heat because of how thin they are. They aren't extremely thin. They're not small by any means. But you have to understand that every type of thickness of cut, where it comes from the animal, all dictates a little bit different variation as to the cooking process. So yeah, this, this beef comes from our ranch. And, and with, these are the ribeyes, but some of the other steaks we get from, from these animals will include some tenderloins and they'll include some sirloins. And then a big favorite of mine is a T-bone. And wow, that looks, looks incredible. A nice beer, huh? Yeah. So one of the things I was looking at, Brady, sorry to change the subject, you see how we're getting some moisture yep. starting to exude here? In the culinary world, that's known as curling, like the pearls you'd wear on a necklace. And it just shows you that that meat is constricting and it's starting to release some of that moisture. So you want to pull it, flip it. If you notice, we got a nice sear on here. The sear is known as the Maillard reaction, which happens at temperatures above 250 degrees. And that caramelization is more complex molecules that are created because of the heat in conjunction with the beef. So I can get this from you. I know I can get this cut. What other cuts do you offer in Um, So, and then obviously the big favorite, um, because it's simple and so versatile, is ground beef. Um, when you get a quarter of ground beef or an eighth, or a quarter of beef or an eighth of beef, it, it comes with quite a bit of ground beef. I think the quarter will be about uh, 70 pounds worth. And so you can throw that in the freezer and use it for breakfast, lunch, or supper. Or all three. <laughs> um, but yeah, so what, I mean, some other things about beef, we grow it on our family farm and it's something that I've always known and always always grown up with, but um, there's always so many questions and that's what I love doing is I love answering questions for people that eat it but want to know more about it, want to know uh, where it's coming from or how we handle the animals, how we treat the animals. And uh, it's, so like for example, our cows, uh, they're mostly on grass all summer long, but we do live in Minnesota and you can get some pretty thick snow in Minnesota. So then in the winter time, we'll put them out on the field and then we'll feed them. We'll feed them a little bit of silage and a little bit of hay and 
and really balance the ration, just like we were talking about the nutrition with beef, we're looking at the nutrition for our cattle the same way and how much how much energy they're getting, how much protein they're getting, how many mega calories they're getting, just to make sure those cows and calves are having the exact right nutritional needs met for them all winter long uh, while well, they can't be grazing on pasture. Mm -hmm. Their health is just as important as ours, if right. not more so. Yeah. Right. We, we like to say our cows probably eat better than the average American. <laughs> <laughs> probably a lot less junk food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So if you notice here, I don't know if you can see it, see how we have that moisture starting to yep. exude on that side? So now that the moisture is starting to exude on this side, we know that the center of that steak is starting to become down. So at this point, because I like it kind of red, how about you, Brady? I, I like it pretty pink in the middle, too. We're going to go ahead and pull them out, okay? And we're just going to set them on our cutting board and let them rest. This one's got a little thicker bone there, so I'm just going to give it an extra minute in the middle of the pond. Now you see all those good little bits in the bottom of the pan there, right? Yep. That's known as soup, like I was talking about before. We're not going to throw those away. That's free flavor. So once we pull these out, we're going to saute some mushrooms in here. And then we're going to throw in a little bit of garlic, some lime juice. You can use Worcestershire or wine is typically used also. Some sort of acid. The acid helps to remove those sticky bits from the pan and get that flavor back into the product that we're going to consume, okay? Yes. We'll just let those chill out. The pan can be nice and hot because these mushrooms need some heat. I treat mushrooms so they're a fungus. I treat them similar to proteins. They like high heat cooking methods. So we're going to get this pan really hot again. You can see it's kind of smoking. We're going to throw these in here and saute them for a minute. And they're kind of fungus, even though it acts kind of like proteins, is also like a plant. So it'll actually kind of soak up most of that oil, see how it just soaked up all that oil, right? And what we're trying to do is just kind of give them the same kind of sear that we did on the, the beef, but to a lesser extent, just because they do have the propensity to burn if you're not careful. And if you notice, now that all that fat's up out of the pan, it may need to be turned down because it might get a little bit too hot. So we're just going to reduce the heat a little bit. I like to visually check my flame and not just go by what the dial says. You kind of keep moving around. Oh yeah, no, it smells good. It smells incredible. <laughs> What's your favorite way to have beef, Brady? I I have my uh, just pretty simple pellet pellet grill or smoker. It's kind of the cheater's way of smoking meat, but it's real simple for me and easy for me to understand. So, right on. my favorite way of doing it, and you can do a steak at a high heat or you can do a brisket or something like that at a pretty low heat for a long time. So we just threw a little bit of garlic in here, some chopped garlic. The mushrooms will take a couple more minutes to cook still, but the garlic will burn if we don't add something to it. And sometimes you need to add water just because of how long things are taking. Right now though we're going to add our acid. So I have some limes here. We're just going to squeeze a couple limes in and you can see immediately they're kind of evaporating. So I think we are going to have to add a little bit of water here just to get all that good bits off the pan. This is known as deglazing when you add a liquid to a hot pan. So excuse me for one second, Brady. And just by adding that liquid in there, look at how quick it cleaned the pan up. Mm -hmm. All those good little bits are now in that juice, in that liquid, and it's getting rammed back into the product that I'm sauteing. So now what we're going to do is we're going to reduce that liquid until it's almost dry. The term in the French cuisine is au sec, which means almost dry. And then we're going to finish it with just a couple pats of butter. Butter makes everything better. 
It's kind of like bacon, but this yeah. isn't a, this isn't a pork This is the beef, this, this is the beef, beef side. Of <laughs> so, um, would you like to grab one of the plates there? Just one of them, yep. And while that's finishing up, we're going to go ahead and put our steak down. Like I said, you don't want to cut into the steak too early. You want to make sure that it's done right. One thing that I haven't done here is season this yet. So we're going to hit it with just a little salt and pepper, even though there is some residual seasoning from the steak being seared in the pan. We still want to make sure that it's seasoned well. So today we're here at the Minnesota Beef Office and a few things about that. Um, the Minnesota Beef Council and Minnesota Beef Checkoff is funded by farmers and ranchers like myself. So a dollar from every sale um, of the beef animals goes towards the checkoff to help promote the beef and the beef industry uh, and through websites such as Beef is What's for Dinner, which you can check out for any information uh, regarding how beef is raised or even how to cook it. So we just want to give a big thank you for the to the Minnesota Beef Council for letting us use their kitchen, um, and wanted to talk a little bit about what what beef is in Minnesota. I mean, when you think of Minnesota, you think of lakes and you think of trees. You don't necessarily think of ranches and cows, but we are the actually the tenth largest um, beef state in the in the United States. So not too far down the list. Wow. and it contributes almost five billion dollars to our economy in the state <laughs> so it's uh no small thing and there's we got a, quite a few farmers and ranchers here in the state that love their beef as much as we do i know it's key to my operations we sell burgers we sell steaks um sirloins we'll be doing ribeyes here shortly at grand casinos um it, you know we're we're a meat and potatoes place right now that's mm -hmm what we've raised and that's what I was raised on so I know that it's something that's key to to my lifestyle and my family um, it's key to the guests that come to my establishments for sure they want beef beef is a is a premier protein well now that our steak has rested and we've sauteed our mushrooms and everything looks really good I mean it smells nice right um, we're gonna cut this steak and there's several ways you can do it um, I like to remove the bone just a little bit to make sure that, you know, if someone's going to go right into it, that they don't bite right into the bone. So we remove the bone, so we'll put that on the plate. Because I like the bone. How about you? Yeah. Yep. So there's different structures here, too. This is known as the spinalis muscle. It's actually my favorite part of the ribeye. Really, really tender. It's also known as a cap steak if you take it off the, the prime rib one in its entirety. Mm -hmm. But we're just going to go ahead and cut it into strips. Right? You can see how much moisture is exuded. You don't have to move it. I'll bring it over I'll there. Move it so it's under the camera. Oh, there you go. Right? And you can see how nice. Not too overcooked, not too undercooked, right? And now that we have this, let's bring this. Put this under the camera too, eh? Is that a good spot for you? So then we're just gonna take our mushrooms that we've sauteed up. You can see them here. See how they've tenderized a little bit. They're not as big, they've wilted some. Just gonna put those right on top of the steak. You can even smell that little bit of lime in there. Oh yeah, it makes a big difference. That acid makes a huge difference. Well, there you are, Brady. There's a nice little breakfast for you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Sauteed mushrooms and a ribeye steak. Yeah. Um, we would finish our steaks when you order them at Grand Casinos with just uh, some seasoned butter. Um, like I said, butter makes everything better. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, everything in moderation. So you don't want to use too much, but you want to add a little bit of flavor. Um, in the kitchen, we always say fat equals flavor. And it's just a, the, the best way to convey flavor, flavor is with fat. When you have to eat a, a low fat diet, you have to become creative with your cooking processes. You have to be careful not to use too much seasoning too, because people will try to substitute that fat mm -hmm. with other seasonings yep. like high salt or anything like mm -hmm. that, or even sugar. Mm -hmm. um, but cooking with right methods like this Maillard reaction, the high heat, 
that creates flavor that doesn't necessarily need more seasoning. Okay. So there you have it. A little ribeye and sauteed mushrooms for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we definitely want to thank chefs like John and uh, families, families across the state for, for their part in, in purchasing beef. I mean, it's how my family and many other families like mine continue to make a living and we just really appreciate the support and we're thankful that we can sit down at the table and have a delicious delicious meal with beef in it uh, and it's all to the very hard work that minnesota farm families put into it um, and so i also want to just throw out that we are, would be more than happy if you guys would be willing to support our family and check out our new endeavor of clear springs market uh, we're really excited about being able to bring beef directly to consumers' tables and being able to meet the people that actually eat our beef. It's not very often that the person that raises the animal can go out and actually meet the person that gets to, gets to consume it and gets to enjoy it uh, in its entirety. So we're very excited to get to meet some consumers and get to meet some beef lovers like myself. And then also for them to come out to the ranch and see see what we're doing on the ranch. I mean, we're... Uh, raising raising the cows from birth all the way all the way to finish and so uh, getting the whole life cycle lifespan in right right in our ranch by Starbuck and so it's just a really unique opportunity for us and we're really excited to start this endeavor.